Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. I'm Aurora Lung from Danville, California. Today, I will install a new motherboard from Big Tree Tech, the E3 RRF B1.1. RRF stands for Wrap Wrap Firmware. This board can run both Marlin and Wrap Wrap Firmware. It's using an ARM Cortex M4 168 MHz processor which is much faster than the one used for many other 32-bit boards, a Cortex-M372 MHz processor. The price of this RRF motherboard is pretty reasonable. It's $38 on Big Tree Tech's official website. It costs a few more dollars if you buy it from Amazon, but you get faster shipping if you're a Prime member. This board has four TMC2209 drivers and has a built-in Wi-Fi module. I also purchased an IDEX expansion board, which has another two TMC2209 chips to control the dual extruders or any stepper motor. It cost $10. My original plan was to install it on the Ender 3 Pro, but I decided to install it on the Sovel SV01 instead. This is because the glass bed of the SV01 is 255 by 300, but the actual print volume is 240 by 280. Because the location of the X limit switch is right here, it's actually limiting the travel of the X axis. This area of the glass bed is unreachable. If we use the TMC2209 sensorless homing features, we can remove the limit switch and gain some extra print volume as the print head can reach from edge to edge of the glass bed. If you follow my video, you can also install it on the Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, or Ender 3 V2. It will be even easier because you can download the firmware made by Big Tree Tech and use it directly on your printer. We need to change a few lines of code for the Sovel SV01, but it's quite simple. Previously, I made two videos about the Sovel SV01. I added a BL touch bed leveling sensor and a set of X and Y belt tensioners. It works great and prints as well as any of the more expensive printers behind me. I have had this printer for about three months and I'm very happy with it. There's no issue and it prints nicely right out of the box but I have two things I want to improve on for this printer. The first is that the dual Z axis is not connected with a timing belt, so it may be out of sync if you put pressure on one side, and then you have to align it manually. The second is to upgrade the 8-bit noisy motherboard. Sovel actually has a silent board upgrade option for this printer, and it's very easy to upgrade. The new board is the exact same. You just need to replace the board and download the firmware from the website. It's a 10 minute upgrade. If you want an easier option, you can buy the board from Sovel. I would prefer to get a faster 32-bit board with more features, so we will install this Big Tree Tech E3 RRF V1.1. All Big Tree Tech E3 series motherboards are drop-in upgrades for the Ender 3. Since Sovel is also using a Creality motherboard, this SV01 is actually using a Creality CR20 Pro motherboard. Its screw holes are the same as the Ender 3 board. So all drop-in upgrade boards for the Ender 3 fit the Sovel SV01 as well. Okay, let's get started. First, we will remove the X limit switch and use some shorter M3 by 8 mm screws to secure the X stepper motor. After the limit switch is removed, you can see the nozzle can actually reach here, which is more than we need, but it doesn't matter, we can set a home offset for that. Next, remove the old motherboard from the SV01. You can take a few pictures of the connectors, so you can always go back if anything goes wrong. Since Sovel already put tags on most of the cables, you don't need to worry too much about it. But you should mark the two thermistor cables as they're unmarked. 
It's not too hard to trace back the wire to find out which is which, but I'll still mark H for the hot end and B for the print bed. Since the connectors on the new motherboard are slightly different, there are two cables that require a little modification. One is the cooling fan at the base. Before, it was connected to the motherboard, but the new RF board only has two connectors. They will be used for the hot end heat sink fan and the parts fan. In this case, I will cut this wire and connect it directly to the power supply, so the case fan stays on once the printer is powered on. I would prefer to add ferrules to the wire. If you don't have that, bare wire will also work, but I want to use ferrules as I don't want them to loosen over time and cause safety issues. The other cable we need to modify is the BL Touch cable. Since the pins on the RRF board are different, you need to switch the 5 volt and the ground wire of this 3 pin BL Touch connector. Instead of yellow, red, and blue, it should be yellow, blue, and red. The C min plug is also reversed, so we can take out the cable to reverse them or simply remove the plug from the motherboard and reverse the direction. If you don't do that, your nozzle will crash into the bed when you do auto home. Before I mount the board to the printer, I will connect a few cables. First, for the power cable from the power supply, connect the positive at this side and the negative at this side. I will do the same to the heated bed wires and hot end wires. For the heated bed and hot end wires, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. We can also connect the Wi-Fi module antenna. The Wi-Fi module that came with this printer is a very simple one. It won't work like Octopi, but it still has some basic features. We may want to enable it later. Okay, we can now mount the motherboard. As all the screw holes are the same, it's quite straightforward. Then, we can plug in the rest of the cables, the X, Y, Z, the second Z, and the extruder. The filament sensor, the hot end thermistor, the heated bed thermistor, and the parts cooling fan connects to fan 0. The hot end heat sink fan connects to fan 1. For the BL Touch, connect the 3 pin cable to the probe. Leave the 2 pin on top and use the 3 pin at the bottom. The yellow wire should face up. For the 2 pin BL Touch cable, connect it to the Z limit switch where we reverse the direction. Finally, for the LCD screen cable, instead of using two ribbon cables, there is only one connector on the motherboard. It's labeled as EXP1, but we actually need to connect it to the EXP3 connector of the screen. Okay, all the cables are connected. We don't have to connect the X and Y limit switches as we will use sensorless homing. We need to put on two jumpers for sensorless homing. Connect these two jumpers under the X and Y stepper drivers. We won't use this feature on the Z axis as the BL Touch should have better accuracy. The hardware installation is now done. We can leave the cover open and test everything first before we close it. Let's do the firmware part. Big Tree Tech has a firmware ready for the Ender 3. We will download this firmware from the Big Tree Tech GitHub and install Visual Studio Code and the Platform I.O. extension if you haven't yet. We can unzip the file. For the Ender 3, you can just copy one of these bin files to the root of your SD card depending on if you have a BL Touch and how you connect it. If you connect all five pins to the probe connector, you should use this file. If you connect the black and white wire to the Z limit switch, you should use this file. For the Silval SV01, we will open the Marlin firmware folder in VS Code. We need to open the folder inside the BTTE3RRF master folder. 
go to BTTESRRFV1.1, Firmware, Marlin Ender 3, and select the Marlin 2072X E3 RRF folder. We need to edit two files, configuration.h and configuration adv.h. We will start with configuration.h. There isn't much to change as the SV01 is basically a larger Ender 3 with a direct drive and dual Z axis. First, search for define default axis steps per unit. The stock single gear extruder of the Ender 3 is 93 steps. The SV01 extruder is a Titan clone, and the steps are 415. Search for Define Z Min Probe uses Z Min and Stop Pin. We need to enable this line as the black and white wire of the BL Touch is now connected to the Z and Stop connector. Search for Define BL Touch and enable this line. Search for Define Nozzle 2 Probe Offset. If you are using the BL Touch mount from Sovel, the distance between the sensor pin and the nozzle should be the same as mine, negative 35, negative 3. Leave the Z offset as 0, since we will find the exact number when we turn on the printer. For Define Probing Margin, if you're still using the binder clips that came with the printer, you need to set it to 20 or 25, or the pin of the BL Touch may probe on the clips. Search for Invert E0DIR and set it to False, as the direct drive extruder of the SV01 is reversed. Search for Define X Bed Size and set the bed size to 300 by 255. The Z max position should be 300. Scroll down a little bit to disable the software end stops. I would disable both min and max, so we can move the print head to anywhere we want. Since the Ender 3 doesn't come with a filament sensor by default, we also need to search Define Filament Runout Sensor and enable this line. Search for Define Mesh Bed Leveling. Comment out this line, as this is for manual bed leveling, and because we have a BL Touch, enable Auto Bed Leveling Bilinear instead. Search for Grid Max Points X, set this to 5 and Y to 4. Since this bed is a rectangular bed, we can do a 5x4, which is a 20-point probe. Search for Define Z Safe Homing. Enable this line as we want a probe at the center of the bed. That's all you need to change for this file. We can now save it and move on to the configuration adv.h file. Search Define Sensorless Homing and enable this line. We also need to set the sensitivity for X. I found that 75 is a little too high for the SV01, so I'll use 60 for both the X and Y axes, and they work great. Finally, we will do more to our cooling fan. Because we connected the case fan directly to the power supply, it will always be on. Our hot end cooling fan is now connected to fan 1. We can set the fan to be off by default so it won't make so much noise when the printer is not in use. We will only turn it on when the nozzle temperature is over 50 degrees. Search for Define Use Controller Fan. Comment out this line as the code is for the case fan. It's supposed to be used to cool down the stepper drivers and MOSFETs, which control the power of the heated bed and heater block. The case fan is directly connected to the power supply, so we don't need this code anymore. Search for E0 Auto Fan Pin. Change negative 1 to PB6, which is the fan 1 connector. By default, the temperature is set to 50, which is reasonable, so we'll just leave it. That's all you need to change. 
we can now save all files and click the alien head icon to compile the firmware using the platform IO extension. Select the Big Tree E3 RRF from the project task and select Build. The terminal should show this success message after a while. Then go back to the Marlin folder, go to .pio, build, big tree E3 RRF, copy the firmware dot bin to the root of your SD card and turn on the printer. After the firmware update is done, we can try auto home and see if the sensorless homing is working. I set sensitivity to 60, which works great on my printer, but in case it's not the right number for you, you can go to configuration, advanced settings, TMC drivers, sensorless homing, and increase the number to make it more sensitive or decrease it to make it less sensitive. Now, you can see the BL touch pin is not exactly at the center of the bed. It's off by a little bit. I will show you how to adjust that later on. We will set the Z offset first. Use the same paper test to move the nozzle close enough to the bed and slightly scratch the paper. For me, the number is about negative 0.8. I will go to configuration, save this Z offset, and select store settings. If the BL touch pin is not exactly at the center when homing, the reason is that we have removed the X limit switch. For now, the X axis can actually go below zero to a negative number. We can try this by moving the X axis. Now, it shows that we are at zero, but we actually aren't. We can manually move it to the edge to just about here. The position is eight. Also, manually move Y to zero and Z to zero. Okay, we are now at the perfect zero position of all three axes, and we want to tell the firmware that this position is the real X0, Y0, Z0. We can do that by letting it stay at the current position, and then going to Configuration, Advanced Settings, and Set Home Offsets. Remember to select Store Settings. Now the printer has saved this value. When we do Auto Home again, you can see that the pin is right at the center of the bed. We can do a simple test print to make sure everything is working. This is a 292 by 242 millimeter rectangle. I will print this to make sure we can max out the print volume. After this upgrade is done, you will have a silent motherboard with sensorless homing features and a processor that runs 10 times faster, even if you don't really notice it. Besides that, this board also has a Wi-Fi module, but it won't work like Octopi as Octopi runs on a Raspberry Pi. Even a cheaper Raspberry Pi costs almost the same as this motherboard. The Wi-Fi module included in this RRF motherboard is just an ESP8266. It is worth around one or two dollars, but you can expect some simple features that allow you to control your printer with Wi-Fi. This board also supports the IDEX expansion board, which can connect another two stepper drivers for a dual extruder, but I'm not going to use it for a dual extruder and instead use it to connect to the second Z axis so we can use Marlin's Z auto align feature to take care of the dual Z axis when they are out of sync. I will show you all these features in the future videos. That's it for this video. If you liked this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week. It will actually be even easier because you don't need to copy if you follow my video, you can install. It will be even easier because you can directly do download the firmware made by Big Tree Tech and use it directly on your printer. And a set of X, X and Y.
Okay. <laughs>